Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Jeff Turner Variety Show. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here, as usual. No, actually, I think I got it down pat. I'm going to show you this deal with a little lady. Now, we're still working out the bugs, okay? So. We're trying to raise money for the station, and this was my idea. And uh, we're st we're taking the words back off of it, but I wanted y'all to see it. Yeah, we're live. You can mail in a donation. Or you can come by and put in Jonathan's hand out there and he'll take care of it the proper way. We appreciate any and all the help that the uh, citizens of Buncombe and surrounding areas will give us. If you're out there watching and listening on the web, we'd appreciate anything you can do to help us out here too. Times is hard everywhere and we're no different. We're a nonprofit organization up here and besides what little monies we get from downtown, which ain't much. Uh, we all pay our own way over here as far as membership and classes, but there's other needs, you know, the station, the power bill, uh, their rent. I think all that stuff's covered, but there's no room to breathe. So we need some breathing room to be able to keep maintenance up on the machinery and things like that. So if you can help, we appreciate it. I'd like to thank Lisa Lamb and Jeff DeCristofaro for helping us out on that deal right there and I played that uh, I played that especially for a fellow named Chris and so I don't know as you can see the wrath of God has not come down on the station yet Chris so I'd say that uh, God probably didn't have a bigger problem with it as you did and uh the way you've treated all the call-in shows up here, I don't really care whether you like it or not. Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to use Miss Kelly Ward and them for background from when they were here before. Folks are saying, well, Jeff, you know, what kind of craziness is this? I said, well, you know, at the beginning of the season, I said I'd do like 20 shows, I believe. And I think I've done those already, to be quite honest with you. But I love coming up here and doing stuff for y'all. So I'm going to play some music, some of my stuff here in a minute. I know that there's everybody's out there watching. So I want to thank my good friend John, John Cogburn because we're working on a song together that's going to be a hit country song that everybody in America and probably the rest of the world is going to love. They're going to want it. They're going to want copies. They're going to want us to come to their town to play this song because it's the best thing since Brooks and Dunn, and they wish they could write as good as us. So I'm just kidding, fellas. Y'all are great. 
<laughs> but we're right behind you, okay? You've already heard it once before in your life, you know, when a Turner and anybody else gets together, it seems to be fireworks and lots of good stuff most of the time. Oh, look, that's Kelly Ward in Southbound, the band. And they came all the way from Tennessee, West Virginia, and Virginia to come down here and play for us free. So I always appreciated that. Anybody that, that will do that for you, they're special people. And they deserve rewind. That's a rewind where they can entertain you, you know. So we did lots of funny stuff while they were here. We put up the uh, five-second clock camera there, and they watched them set up the whole studio, recording the instrument at a time, you know. <laughs> and that was Jonathan's keen idea. I didn't know they had something like that. And he put it way up in the ceiling and watched them, you know, all come in. I think that was cool. You can actually... There's a lot to be done up at this place, and so much fun you can have. This is just like extra footage, you know, that would, wouldn't even be there if it hadn't been for Jonathan telling me about it. And I so much appreciated it added to the whole deal. And she's just beautiful. That's Miss Kelly Ward right there. And she's a former American Idol contestant, and I had run an ad in the Internet I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, that if anybody was on there and they wanted to get back on television, they'd come down here and I'd put them on. You know, we don't pay nothing, but it keeps them out front, keeps them doing their thing, you know, working on their creativity. And, and I really did appreciate that. I really did. Something about this room just looks dark today. My eyes look like somebody. Just, you know. <laughs> I know there's a few of you out there that would like to do that. You know, what's going on here lately, man? I mean, like, uh, what has happened to the leadership in this country? I mean, they've sold us out for the other most pence across the seas, or rubles, or finnings, or whatever they're getting all them people. And then here, even locally, just here locally, they're working the people over. Now, some would say, well, you know, we gave the money back, you know, when we found out about it. No, well, it just shows you weren't on top of your job. And if you did know about it before and you didn't come forward voluntarily, it's just the same thing as fraud to me. Whether you give it back when you get caught or not, it's irrelevant. You should be prosecuted for fraud, all of you. And it's my opinion only that certain persons may or may not have colluded with you in an effort to make those things happen. Oh, well. You know, we know the county commissioner's salary ain't much, so we'll just let you do a little of this, a little bit, a little creative math work, and you can't even get in trouble for it. I'm going to try to have y'all arrested before the end of this week. Civil and criminal charges. Fraud. That's pure fraud. It don't matter where you give the money back or not. It's fraud. You should be in jail, all of it. Secondly, Failure of your oath to protect and defend the tax base. And that's probably the most serious one to me. Fraud, uh, everybody does that every day. But failure of your oath to protect and defend that tax base. See, y'all aren't protecting and defending anything. You was just spending the money and raising taxes to keep covering the costs. And what you should have been doing was being thrifty with the people's money, not putting every prod $10 million in the hole on this front yard at the courthouse. 10 million plus. And now you're going to build a half a million dollar bathhouse? Oh, which incidentally, folks, is going to be sitting right in front of the tree that y'all worked so hard to save. All them little sewer gases rolling right out at the magnolia. So your tree saving job ain't done yet. Y'all need to be down there too if you're still into that kind of thing. This ain't a call to action, you know, but I'm telling you, they're going to build a little crapper right in front of the magnolia tree. What was wrong with our park in our front yard? To me, my opinion, just a way for you and your buddies to swindle millions out of the people of Buncombe County and the state of North Carolina. If there's a way I can have you arrested and tried, you will be in jail. And I'm a former honorably served elected person for four years from this county and I lived on $42 a month what little bit of money they gave me it was a little bit of gas money and one meal let's see y'all make it on your 42 and the little pension they give you for being there you need to be removed 
And you need to do it voluntarily before I come over and have you arrested. I'm going to have y'all arrested. Every cotton picking one of you is going to be arrested. Wanda, you too, especially you. You're making two thirds times more than you ought to be. If there's anybody bilking the people, it's you. You can either do your job for 70 grand or hit the highway. You're fired. All of you are fired. Yeah, I'm a citizen. I can fire you. And you're fired. You don't represent me. And I just about bet there's 50 percent of this county right now that you don't represent either. You don't like that? Too bad. You're crooks. You are crooks. All of you. All five of you. Crooks. Absolute crooks. Buncombe County Commissioners. You should walk over there and turn yourself in. That's fraud against the people. Don't give me your high and mighty, because I don't care to hear it. I wasn't, I wasn't going to whine at you at the meeting the other day, because there's enough people ready to hang you in the front yard. And if you don't go over there and do the right thing, you will be arrested. I'm going to find a way to have you all arrested. Everybody else pays their due, and y'all are going to pay yours, and you're not going to be running this town any longer. You've run us into the ground, just like I said on numerous shows for the past four years. I've been saying, stop the spending. Well, y'all been doubling your income in such a way that it's written that you can't be? Uh-uh. No. You're going to jail for fraud against the people. You're going to go to jail. You've broke your oath to the people. You broke your oath to the people. What are you, a bunch of communists over there now? Stealing at will? My phone bill $70 a month, and yours shouldn't be no more. And the car payments, you shouldn't even be getting no money driving a county car. If somebody hadn't have found all that out, you'd still be sitting over there spending that money. See, that's how I know you're not honest. That's how I know you're crooks, and that's how I know you is purposely defrauding the people on that. And it don't matter if you give it back. You're guilty of frauding the people. Go resign. I was an honorably serving person for four years, and I didn't rob nobody like that. I want the Attorney General of North Carolina to come up here and not only investigate you, but to arrest you and walk you into that jail himself. And if he won't do it, maybe just throw charges of collusion at him with you. Getting phone calls and beeps already, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think, John? Is it spooky or what? <laughs> Stand by me. That's what I need all the people of Buncom to do. If I go over and have that bunch arrested and y'all don't back me up, you deserve everything that happens to you, just like George told you on here last year. Everything that happens, you deserve. If you lose your house, you starve to death, it's because you did not stand up against them people when you had the opportunity. Now is the time they need to go. They don't need to finish their term. They've been over there defrauding the people of Buncombe County and the good citizens of this area, and y'all need to be in jail. 
I ain't going to say that three minutes down there at the county commissioner's meeting. No, I'm going to save it for a full hour where I can steam everybody up at you. You've been robbing us blind, and you need to go to jail. If you don't like it, leave town. It's just going to get hotter. The oven is on, and y'all are in it. And there ain't nobody gonna walk around in there with you like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to drag your lousy butts out. Run, that's all you can do. Leave town now, we might just forget you did it. I knew none of you is no good for this county. The world has changed, and y'all are Stonehenge, and you're You've become the living epitome of everything that's dead and gone. Now you may have a big name somewhere in your neighborhood, but I've lived here my whole life, and I remember people getting sick and bad off of some nasty slaw, Bill. Do you? You will leave. You're going to leave before your term's up and you're going to work for a whole lot less more pennies. I can guarantee you that. You'll be lucky if you ain't serving food down at Craig. There's more than just Jeffy up here barking. You got everybody in the town zeroing in in for you now. Because see, when you give the money back, that's the same as admitting fraud. And you ought to be in jail. Every one of you. Including Wanda. If you ain't guilty, the judge and the jury will find it that way. But as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, you're all guilty of frauding the people of North Carolina. If failure your oath to protect and defend the tax base, where's that list of stuff? I had a list wrote out. I've been working on it for two weeks. Specific charges. Jeff Turner Live. Hey Peggy, how are you? Oh well now, he's gonna be on there in a few more weeks. It may be as early as next week because me and him's writing this song together and we're gonna do it. And <laughs> Peggy says, hello John, your aunt now, and all the other Peggy's. We don't want to leave none out. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. <laughs> thank you, Peggy. Bye-bye. I want to thank you, RT. Wonderful getting phone calls and messages all over the place from folks here. 
some of them saying, hey, man, get them, because you're right, Jeff. Them people did commit fraud against people of Buncombe. That's what half the phone calls and messages has been. I'm not the only one over here. And believe me, I didn't start it. I'm not the one up there taking money from the general fund and using it like it's my own. You have a salary for your position. Anything else should come under expenses, but that don't mean it's money in your pocket. And you know that. Y'all willfully took that money and defrauded it. I bet you've been using them cars for a little personal business too, ain't you? Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, what really happened there, see? Now, we had them in the studio A over here for like four hours one day, and this was a few seasons back. So they came in, they did some warm-up music for an hour and a half or so, and then they went and changed clothes, and then they came back and did some more stuff. So it's got all kinds of music and all kinds of different things on here. Not enough time to show y'all of it in here today. But uh, it's just good, you know, to have a little repeat stuff on every once in a while, and... And uh, some of the, the some of these bands, you know, you just got to really give to those folks. And they come from multiple states away out of the goodness of their heart just to play music for the people of Buncombe in western North Carolina. And some of you say, well, you know, I, I didn't ask them to come down here. Well, no, you didn't. But I asked them on your behalf because you needed some good music. <laughs> and I could pick up on it. Anyway, I want to say hello to all our friends out there in Buncombe, and I got friends in every corner in the county, friends in the city, even though it don't look like it. Um, and we're all mad at you. We're all mad at you downtown, county and city. Y'all have had your last, your last chance driving the wagon. You get off the next stop, there ain't gonna be no more driving the wagon for any of you. As far as I'm concerned, what you've done is criminal. A collusive. That's just my opinion, you know, and I can state that over here. 
but it ain't just my opinion. There's a lot of people out there that was thinking that. And I was thinking, well, you know, the charges might not have been that bad, but actually they are. You know, you defrauded the people. You need to walk over there and have yourself arrested for it. Don't make us track you down. Don't make us come in there and arrest you in the middle of the next meeting. Go turn yourself in and then resign. Because the people of Buncombe don't want you driving their bus no more. They don't want you running the show no more. Let's say you've accidentally sold our parks off. Now you accidentally just was spending like, what, an extra thousand every two weeks? Accidentally, accidentally, oh, we're sorry, it slipped, went right over, uh-uh. Your excuses are pale, stale, and pathetic, and we don't want you no more. We don't want none of you. You just take it and leave. If things break out terrible around here in this country, like I think they may, y'all don't stand a chance. You better hope the country don't break out that way. But it's in a serious, serious bad shape right now. And y'all help put it there by years of reckless spending. Yeah, you got your mandates, and if the governor, if she had a half a hair on her butt, she would have cut the mandated stuff as much, at least, as the economy fell. Now, housing starts and other things just fell from 27 to 57% in cities across the country. Half the economy's dead and gone, and you people are still sitting up there bilking and robbing us for the last four weeks until somebody found it. You need to resign before we, you, you're going to go to jail. I'm going to figure out a way legally to have you all arrested for frauding the people and failure of your oath. That's the big failure of your oath, see? Reckless spending. You could have said no to every other project that come along, you know, that wasn't mandated, but you didn't. That's not leadership. That's idiots. Yeah, I just called all of you idiot. And your little manager, too. Too bad, huh? You better give us the rest of our money, too, because I don't want the money that's supposed to be going for this station to pay for another $10 million overring on a crapper out here in the front yard. Half a million dollars for an outhouse with a wind and a shower in it. You people are robbing the county blind. And that conservancy, as far as I'm concerned, you have no legal standing on that park. I don't care what judge found out. This judge says you don't. There shouldn't be no building down there or nothing in that grass. That's not meant for administrative offices and pools and plate. It's a park the way it was given. A yard for the people to gather in and have fun and play music. Not to shield the courthouse in the city building with kids. Them are the same kind of buildings overseas that we were bombing in Baghdad, ladies and gentlemen. Now they've got your children, the community children, they're shielding the courthouse in the city building with your kids. Now what happens when the bad guys come over here and start bombing us? They're shielding the courthouse just like Saddam did. By putting that swimming pool in front of the city building and the courthouse, they just endangered the lives of the citizens and the children of this town. You are shielding the county building and the city building with children. And that's a no-no. Yeah, you didn't look at it that way, did you? Well, I did. You're a bunch of idiots. Yeah, I'm mad, folks. If you don't like it, then go down there and vote them out, and I'll shut up. Or go have them arrested yourself. Since none of you seem to have no juice for America left no more. Why did I volunteer to go into the military to help keep this country free when you're letting the crooks run it? I'm sick of the crooks, John. 
That's exactly what that is. With that front yard over there, they've got swimming pool out there now and a little bath house. All they're doing is shielding the city building and shielding the county courthouse with children in an effort to keep it from being bombed. You need to get that park, get it back in the hands of the people like it was. It wasn't yours to sell. It wasn't theirs to buy, and it certainly ain't y'all's to shield the courthouse and the city building with kids. Yeah, just not more than two or three years ago, everybody in town was saying, oh, God, how bad that is. That man's putting kids in there in the buildings and in the bomb factories and stuff, you know, over there. Well, they're doing the same thing here, ladies and gentlemen, and sure county commissioners and your city people shielding the courthouse and the city building with children playing in the front yard. Yeah, I'm mad and I'm upset and I'm not going to shut up. It goes to the basic freedoms of this country. I'm not going to shut up. And I'm going to be in your face from now on. Because I know what you're doing over here to the public access and the free speech channel. Most of our money probably paid for the $10 million overring you already got on the front yard down here. You people's in trouble and you're going to go to jail. And this is one former elected person that the state seal says I carry it for life. Well, it's my duty when I think you're destroying the Constitution of the state of North Carolina and the Constitution of the United States to have you arrested, and I'm going to do just that. You know why? Because it's the right thing to do. Now go over there, turn yourself in for frauding the people, and then go over there and resign. Gary Jackson city man you go ahead and resign too i remember how it was in the military you were in command of that office and then people frauded the people over there and you was their boss you should have lost your command and you do not need to be working for the city no more go get over there resign your position without pay without benefits i'm sick of this Sorry, governance around here, and so is the rest of the people of this county. You're going to hold you to account, and you are going to go to jail. I got people saying, Jeff, why don't you shut up and play a song? <laughs> well, I'm serious, folks. These people's been robbing us blind around here and then making us all cater to every little whim. They say, well, you know, we, they slipped one by us and we ended up selling the parkland. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. They didn't slip one by on you. You've done that out of You've done, in my opinion, you've done that with knowledge of forethought. Part of your homeland security deals. Y'all ain't going to be running this town forever. And I'll tell you right now, I've heard some stuff this week y'all just don't want to ever hear repeated. And I've already asked God to let me live long enough to see all of you in jail. And since I already got a five and a half year head start on living from lung cancer, there's a good chance I'm going to see y'all in jail too. I want to thank everybody that's beeping and calling in, telling me how much they appreciate me standing up and making mention of the same stuff that they'd like to say to you in their face. I'm getting all kinds of calls and letters saying thank you for your honorable service, Jeff. Thank you for not robbing us like they're doing. Folks, I get real upset because I am a military veteran. You know, no, I wasn't in Vietnam. I volunteered right at the end of Vietnam when everybody else was still running off to Canada. But I volunteered. And I went in and I did good duty, good honorable duty. And I got hurt in there. And they put me back out and I come here. Had a little bit of a rough time, you know, readjusting from the military world to the civilian world. And uh, hung in there, won elected office, served it honorably for four years while those people 
you know, they're just, they don't even hold records, right? You know, I bitched about that for four years, you know, them just making up their own public record from whatever was said. The attorney general of the state should be up here, but I guess they're all buddy buddies, you know. I tell you right now, y'all have made the law of none effect, so when somebody comes up and does something mean and bad to you, blame yourself. Blame yourself. I'm talking to the leadership folks, not the listening audience there. I think I've done enough of that because if I get going, I'll be over trying to arrest them before the show's over. I'm just that adamant about it. I want every one of them in jail. Every commissioner in this county, I want you in jail. Be it known today, Jeff Turner is going to try his best to have each and every one of you thrown in jail for defrauding the people. And them are criminal charges. These other charges are civil about failure of your oaths, you know. Now, I've been looking into the constitutional way to remove you from office before your term is up. And you know what? There's a way to do it. And I'm working on it. I've done got the things drafted out and all kinds of good stuff. You'd be surprised how smart and knowledgeable I got all them times y'all kept taking me to jail. I was having surgeries, and over a couple of hundred times they took me to child support court, ladies and gentlemen, wasting your hard-earned money that way. Me making payments the best I could. Like eight surgeries inside of 10 years and every bit of that, every two weeks, they was trying to get me over here for not keeping up with my child support. I was sending money, I've done everything I could. I give you every penny I was getting. That old evil woman that was over there for child support, that was her buddy too, but she lost her big election four years ago and I'm so glad because she's the worst thing that ever happened to a child. It's coming home, it's coming home, ladies and gentlemen. They wanted, they talked about their economy being so great here, see, it just was a little slower than the rest of the world to cave in on top of them, see, because they finagled the money around, right? But now the governor, she's flat broke, the whole state's broke, you know. It had they listened four years ago when I said stop spending the money, we wouldn't be in the shape right now. A lot of you county workers that feel like you're deserted by them, if they listened to me four years ago, there's a good chance you could still be working right now. But they didn't. But they didn't. They don't listen to no one. They ignore our every thing that would go up there to the meetings and they'll sit there right in our face and be a majority of the people in the county not want it, and they'll vote it in. That's not working for the people. We didn't put you people to be Nero and Caesar over there. You got a bunch of Napoleon stuff going on right now because y'all fixing to meet your Waterloo. You probably done met it, just don't know it. Waterloo, <laughs> Waterloo. Where are you? Waterloo. Yeah, John Carver and I are working on a song together, and it's about leadership. Now, this is going to be the first verse of it. So y'all can tell me what you think, because John's over there right now, and I think he's right now at this very moment working on the, the mixing part of it, unless he had to stop and do something. <laughs> Well, it's hard to be a leader when there's no one left to follow when you leave. Each one's got their own way now, that's just how the good book said it'd be. And how can they run our country? When their own damn house is heading straight for hell It's hard to be a leader If there ain't nobody there
straight for hell Well it's hard to be a leader When ain't nobody there Anyway ladies and gentlemen We're working on it Gotta have a second verse The second verse has been written We're working out the bugs you know Bugs. Well, we just started yesterday, so y'all can give us another week to finish it before we play it for you officially. Yes, I said another week. <laughs> hey, hey, don't look so disappointed. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, Jeff, I could write it and have it done by Wednesday. Well, I'll just come on over here to my house and do it, and we'll, we'll come over here Wednesday and play it on somebody's show. Let's see. I'm going to run for county commissioner next time, and I'm going to need a lot of people's help out there. Now, you know, last when I ran for soil and water, when I ran for soil and water, I didn't raise a dime, folks. And 22,000 of you voted for me right at it, give or take a couple hundred, without raising a penny, without robbing anybody. Now, you see what happens when the folks over here raise money and keep their job. They're ending up robbing, the, they're not only robbing people, taking up funding for elections, now they're robbing people straight out of the uh, expense account. That's robbery to me. But some of you's already got some stuff to pay for and talk to the good Lord about, don't you? Before all this, before robbing the people, before taking the people's money, some of you's going to answer up for stuff like dead babies, lies, conniving. You got a multitude of sins. I didn't say it, the good Lord did. And all you people down there, you know, the prayers is wasted on them downtown. They've been robbing you blind for years. Selling your parks, doubling their own. Uh, what we had offered them, you know, to be a salary for county commissioner wasn't enough, so then they started having to bilk the people on expense funds. Shame on y'all. Shame on ever cotton picking one of you. And I can't really say what I'd want to on here, because even at 3 o'clock in the morning, they'd bleep most of it out. I tell you what, a good friend of mine called the good Lord, he's up at heaven, and y'all gonna have your judgment day. You may end up having one on earth before it's over with, but you're gonna have your judgment day. And all them little things, line upon line, precept upon precept, you're gonna pay for it all. You're gonna definitely pay for it all. Cause I know the man I know who owns heaven. I know who runs it. I know who's waiting at the gate. And I know who's going to be waiting at the gate. And I know who holds the key to the eastern gate. I know many things. A lot of you know I know. And some of you know. I'm going to get into one of them know things. I know you know, and you know you know. But you don't know that I know that you know, then that, that makes me know that I know you. You don't know that I know. <laughs> get lost in all that, couldn't you? Uh, anyway, you know, I want to come up here and just play music, but I think stuff needs to be said and done around here, you know. And the, quiet, the, the, the fact of the matter is... The fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, that's the most important thing down there. Not my show, not the song John and I are writing, not all the wonderful times that all us producers has up here. The real show in town is your commissioners doing these things and getting away with them. And y'all not making them account. Now, Miss Peggy, she's a nice lady over there. I saw her at the meeting. I saw her on the news the other night. See, she still wants to work it out where... Y'all can stay around. 
I don't want you staying around, Miss Peggy. I don't want them staying around no more at all. They've robbed the people one, two times too many. You know what I'm saying? They need to go. And you don't need to pacify them no more that way. They need to go. And you quit being nice to them. They robbed you. They robbed me. They robbed everybody in this county. And it don't matter if they gave the money back. If they catch a bank robber a mile from the store, then he gives the money back too. He's still guilty of robbing the bank. And they need to be locked up for fraud. Criminal charges of fraud. Sheriff, go do your duty. I'm serious. Go do your duty. As a former elected person that carries a seal for a lifetime, go elect them. Uh, go arrest them. And then y'all can elect me. All I'll do is try to get the governor to cut the mandated stuff, and there won't be one thing purchased on the taxpayers' money for the next four years that ain't accounted for, including paper clips, ink pens, stuff like that. And if we don't need them, they won't be ordered automatically either. Gary Jackson, did you resign from your job yet? I'm not going to let up on you. I was in the military, and I know what happens to people that do not supervise their people. And when they do stuff like that, the supervisor himself loses the job, and you should no longer be working for the city in any capacity. You just go ahead and leave. I'm serious. The chips are going to start falling right here, right now. People's going to go to jail. They're going to be regretful. They're already regretful. And they're just hoping one good citizen besides Jeff will go down. They're hoping nobody will. You know, what are you people waiting on? Get smacked upside the head with a baseball bat? Hmm? What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? There shouldn't be no commissioners meeting this week because y'all should be resigned by then. And you should definitely be in jail that night. That'd be a good time to have you arrested, wouldn't it? Then the law will know where you're at. All of you there together in one spot. That'll make it easier filling up the prison van. Look, folks, I'm really upset about this, and it is free speech TV. And part of our culture here is to elect officials that take care of the people. Well, they're not. They're playing somebody else's game. It's like the state ain't ours, the county ain't ours no more, the front yard ain't even ours. And y'all sold it. And you've sold out the people. And I don't want you. You may have a bunch of the older citizens fooled, but ain't one of us young ones that's fooled. And you're gonna leave office. All of you. And Wanda Green, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> I'm a citizen of this county. I'm a former elected person of this county with a state title, and you're fired. You're all fired. But I can't unelect you, but she ain't elected. You're fired, woman. And I hope you get all the trouble coming to you. As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, y'all colluded together to do that. Collusion. Ain't heard that word in a while, have you? Well, that's what it amounts to. And yeah, I did have some criminal justice training over here, so I can be pretty well assured in what I'm saying is correct. Y'all make me mad. I'm probably the worst one in the whole town. I stand there and smile on my face, smiling at you, wasn't I? Saying, I don't care. Well, I do care. That just wasn't the time or the place. Now it's the time and place. You're going to be arrested this week, all of you. I mean, not just to slap on the wrist, you got to come talk to the judge. I want to see you in handcuffs going to jail. Just like Vallejo, California did to their bunch that was robbing them a few months ago. You need to be in cuffs and charged with fraud and crimes against the people. A little crime against the people is no more different than what Hitler was doing. If you let them get away with this, folks, when's it going to stop? 
when they mustard gas half the people that know they're crooks? Listen, Bunkum, you need to wake up out there. No call to action. You can sit there and sleep and sleep and sleep till you're sleeping in the front yard or the street because they're going to have your house. They don't know how to stop spending, see. I do because I've had to live on the budget. Put me in there and things will straighten out. Put somebody in like Don, things will straighten out. These bunch of crooks that's been there for 10, 15, 20 years, nothing's going to get straight. Nothing. I have a vote of no confidence on all of you. No confidence. And it's going around, you know what I'm saying? There's no confidences everywhere in this county right now on y'all. Because you're crooks. You need to be in jail. You need to be in jail and you need to be arrested for fraud and crimes against the people. And that's a fact. And if you don't like it, too bad. But you need to be arrested for fraud. Oh, and Wanda, you're fired. You're still fired. I fired you about five, ten minutes ago. You're still fired. The folks, we're serious here in this county. We're serious. We got people from Tennessee calling us saying, why don't y'all do something? Go have them arrested. They're robbing you blind. People from other states calling us saying, was the people of Bunkum on drugs? Well, I'm going to ask you what the phone caller asked me. Are y'all on drugs? If somebody's breaking into your tool shed, you'd have the double barrel on them out there. Well, they're breaking into your money shed. You should be steaming mad. You should be mad as the Egyptians, mad as the Libyans, mad as the Iranians down there in that street right now. You should be all over them people this week. They're crooks. They're all crooks. Sit up there under the guise of nice suit. Oh, I've had lost too. I'm the man. I'm the man. Right over your head. At least you claim to be that dumb. So which is it? Are you that dumb? Or are you purposely robbing us? And letting all these people just screw the county over? Which is it? Are you that dumb or are you doing it on purpose? It's one or the other. You tell us. You tell us by coming on television this week. You get your buddies out there at WLOS to run a real story about being unbiased story about how y'all been robbing the people. Darcell, you people, I can't even, I ain't even going to watch y'all show no more. Because you're siding with a bunch of crooks. I'm going to call Fox News in to do the investigating up here since WLO, what's her name, is tainted with the smell of the same nasty stuff. If you ain't going to get out there and report it, we'll call in an outside news agency that will dig it up. And they're going to dig until they find everything. Then WLOS, you ain't even going to get a byline. You don't back the people up. It's paying to keep that station on the air. You know, I don't know what time it is, folks, but I guess it's about that time. I could go into the preaching business. I just ain't pure enough to do that. The Bible says all kinds of stuff, you know. Just to be a deacon, you've got to be a, a you know, a person of um, good moral perpetuity or whatever the word is. You know, you can't have multiple wives and all these things. And I see churches perverting the word just to bend it for Cousin Roy to get in and do something. You can't do that. The God's word will not be mocked. It is not full of chaos and confusion, as many people suggest. And you preachers just can't go around writing people into the fine offices of the church when the Lord says there's a specific way that has to be done. If God wanted demons in charge of us to help us get saved, he would have done it that way. But he didn't. 
the people that bring the word of God to you, they may have been saved, but I keep hearing all these saved people saying, well, I'm just not perfect. Well, then you ain't saved because the Bible says, be ye perfect even as your Father which in heaven is perfect. So if you get saved, you ain't supposed to be running around saying, well, I, no, 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 no. That's part of the old person. Now, you can't have it all these different ways around here, folks. You know, if you're going to have good elders in your church leading you, then they should be exactly what the Word says, you know. They should be what the Word says. They shouldn't have multiple wives, multiple partners, hang out at Joe's Pool Hall and Bar on Saturday night before the Sunday service. You know what I'm saying? There are certain offices in the... the... Why do you think God cleared out heaven? Because everybody wasn't doing it right. Somebody on the inside let the devil and them have their way. It's an inside job. Read Ezekiel. That's why we're all being down here tried and tested. We got kicked out of heaven too. Because they don't know who all's guilty for giving them the inside edge up there. So he cast out Satan and the bad angels and all them guys and they fell down to earth, you know, and all that. And everywhere else they fell. And we're here. We're being sent from heaven, though, through a specific pattern of birth and dying. And God's given us a second chance where Satan and Lucifer don't have it, you know. He's done condemned. It's done wrote. It's done done, you know. But we have a chance to redeem ourselves, and you do that by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And that's how you do it. It's just that simple. You don't got to call in a half a million dollar subcommittee like the county commissioners do to get some better idea on it. God says it's this way. That's the way it works. And that's the way it's always going to work. And that's the way it will always work. I think I just made a redundant statement, didn't I? It's unchanging. It's unbiased. Everybody gets a chance to go to heaven if we all do the same thing and that's accept him as our savior. I didn't write it, I didn't make it that way, but if I was gonna write it, I probably would have made it that way. And folks, we wanna thank everyone that's tuned in this week and watching this on the web. And listening to me ramble on. Hey, it's our good friend John Cochran calling in. Hey, welcome to Jeff Turner Live. Hey, man, I still think I'm on the air by about a minute. I don't know. I probably have a hit squad waiting on me when I get outside over here, but that's all right. I still got a little military trick or two I can hit back with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything I'm saying is right about downtown. I appreciate your support. I appreciate it. I really do. Everybody keeps saying Tuesday, so I don't know. You better double check that. I thought the county commissioners was always meeting on Thursdays. So I don't know. It'll be a Tuesday or a Thursday. I can guarantee you that. We need to check and make sure that. I've heard Tuesday and Thursday on the television this week, so they used to uh, meet on Thursdays, I thought. But yeah, they may have changed it around. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. All right, John, we appreciate you calling in. Thanks for calling Jeff Turner Live and watching us today. And your Aunt Peggy said to tell you hello as soon as I talk to you. All right, all right, brother. Good friend John Carver, ladies and gentlemen. We got about one minute left on Jeff Turner Live. I know it's been a crappy, crappy kind of thing all weekend long, you know. We do appreciate Kelly Ward Southbound, and I'll play them again for you coming up soon. I'll just roll the whole thing. I was going to play music all day today. I'm really upset about this county thing.